Hello and welcome to another video. So we're checking out the next lot of cards for the new expansion. These are, of course are all the official ones. I've only been covering the official because covering the unofficial ones that haven't been confirmed yet or aren't being translated properly are a little more difficult. So we're just covering what we've got. So first off we have a Plagued City, a 7 drop gold amulet for Shadowcraft, countdown 2. Fanfare, transform all followers in play into zombies. Whenever a follower excluding zombies comes into play, transform it into a zombie. So this is just a massive zombie card. I'd like to see some more zombie support because I think this could be a really interesting card. So whenever something comes into play, it's going to turn into a zombie. And when it comes into play, it always refers to anything. So if you are summoning something, if you are having a token off something, that's going to be a zombie now. It's pretty much guaranteed which makes it a little more interesting than normally, so not a bad card. Then we have Alexandrite Demon, a 2-drop, two 2-1 two blood silver card. Fanfare, choose, put a blazing sapphire or a blazing ruby into your hand. So the blazing sapphire is a 2-drop amulet for blood, countdown 2, fanfare, draw 2 cards, last word, deal 2 damage to your leader. So not a bad card, I mean getting the draw 2 I think is going to be important in most matchups now, so being able to draw more cards is great, and dealing 2 damage to your leader's last word is a little bit of vengeance synergy. So Overall, I think we're going to be definitely leaning towards a more control style vengeance deck over an aggro style vengeance deck, at least with what we've seen so far. Then of course, Blazing Ruby is the 4 drop amulet, countdown 2, fanfare, destroy an enemy follower, last word, deal 2 damage to your leader. So this one is just the destroy enemy effect, which I don't mind, it's nice to have the versatility, but I think Sapphire will see the most play overall, unless, I mean, you really need this for control. Then we have Sephiric Blade, a 2-drop gold neutral card, destroy an enemy follower or amulet that costs 2 play points or less, enhance 6, destroy an enemy follower or amulet instead. So this gives you just a little bit of wiggle room with this card, this is a little bit better than some of the other amulet removal cards, I mean, follower removal, there's definitely better cards out there, but amulet removal, this isn't a bad card. I mean, if Tenko takes off, this could be something that a lot of people want to tech into their decks, but there may also be better amulet removal in each deck that people want to use, so it's really up in the air on this one. Then we have Alzia, Puglist Princess. So it's a 3 drop, 3 2, Dragoncraft follower, Rush, Fanfare. If, uh, if Overflow is active for you, gain Clash, gain plus 1, plus 1. So this isn't a bad Overflow card, especially with Rush. It means you can turn this into a 4 3, 4 3, which isn't bad in that case. And just its generic stats isn't bad either. So for a silver card, I think this is quite acceptable as a Dragon card. Then we have Grand Aspire, a 2 drop rune card spell. Deal 2 damage to an enemy follower, Earthrite, deal 4 damage to an enemy follower instead, and deal 1 damage to the enemy leader. So this is just some Earthrite low cost synergy, which I was hoping we'd see. We need a few more good Earthrite synergy cards, and this one isn't a bad one at all. Then we have Disponent Chimera, a 6 drop 6 6 legendary for rune. They are really pushing the Chimera archetypes in rune. Having a lot of Chimeras really leads me to believe they just want chimeras in every deck. So this is a fanfare deal 3 damage to an enemy follower if this card has been spell boosted at least 6 times. Then recover 3 player points if this card has been spell boosted at least 9 times. Then gain storm if this card has been spell boosted at least 12 times. So overall if this card has been spell boosted 12 times and you're playing this, you are going to deal 3 damage to an enemy follower recover 3 play points, and gain a storm, which honestly is crazy. Even just at 9, that's not bad. You're basically getting a 3 drop 6-6 six, six, deal 3 damage, which should be pretty easy to do at around turn 6 to have the spell boosted to 9 if you've played many spell boost decks. So I don't think this card is bad. It's definitely not the whole D-shift replacement sort of thing, and it's definitely not a great replacement for the normal Chimera, but I think it's a pretty fitting card overall. Then Dragon Huntress, a 2 drop 2-2. Two, two. Dragoncraft card, of course. Whenever this follower attacks a follower with at least 5 attack, gain Bane. So, another kind of Bane gainer. I believe we had a neutral card, or I can't remember. Another card that was very similar to this effect um, with 5 attack or with at least 5 attack. I think it was 5 defense in the other one's case. But gaining Bane isn't always a bad thing. I wish this card had Rush or something. It would make it at least that little bit better for dealing with big threats. Otherwise, it's a very normal bronze card. Then we have Fairy Refuge, a one drop amulet. So if at least two other cards were played this turn, you can you can have at least 
<laughs> sorry, and you have at least one player point. Choose play this card as either Fairy's Yawn or Fairy's Awakening. Count down two at the end of your turn, put a fairy into your hand. So without any other effect, this is just a generic fairy creation card. It just generates fairies for a couple of turns. But if you get Fairy's Yawn, it becomes a one drop amulet. Count down two at the end of your turn, select a random enemy follower, it can't attack next turn. Or Fairy Awakening, also count down two duration. During your opponent's turn, whenever an enemy follower attacks your leader, deal one damage to that follower. So, kind of a ping effect. Similar to Brambles, I guess, in a way, because it is pinging, pinging things every time they attack. But, of course, not quite as good, because it doesn't really get that extra little push onto your followers. Then, of course, Holy Priestess Laura. Lauren. Lorna? I don't know. Who cares? Two drop, two, two gold, Havencraft card. Evolve. Choose, put a... Laura's Holy Water or a Laura's Iron Fist into your hand. Then, with Laura's Holy Water, is a one drop restore, restore two defense to an ally, draw a card spell. And Laura's Iron Fist is a two drop spell, deal X damage to an enemy follower, X equals the attack of the strongest allied follower in play. So that's not too impressive, but I think it's impressive enough. Then we have Father Punishment, a one drop, one one Havencraft card has no unevolved effect, but its evolved effect is destroy an enemy follower or amulet. This card, honestly, is going to be great at destroying amulets, I think. Even though it is evolve, this is like, um, like some of the other evolve destroy follower effects. So, I'm trying to think on what they were, but, uh, Maisie, I think, is one of them. A few things like that. This card is just a little better because, of course, it's a lower cost. And with the Evo, it's actually still not too bad, especially as one. So if you build a Havencraft Tenko deck where evolving isn't necessarily 100% what you need, this card could make an okay removal card. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Then we have Albear, an 8-drop 6-6 six, six Silver Forest card. Ambush, whenever this follower attacks, give negative 1, negative 0 to all enemy followers if Ambush is active for this follower. So this just drops your opponent's board pretty much. Like, having Ambush is great as an 8-drop, but... Still a little slow, definitely makes sense it's a silver, but I think unless the opponent's running a lot of low cost stuff, it's probably not going to do that much good. And that does finish off this video, so all these cards have been, I would say, good to average sort of levels of play, especially a lot of the um, gold cards have been reasonable. We have got some more cards that will be coming very soon because I've seen a lot of the unofficial stuff, there's Amazing Haven Legendary, Rune Legendaries, and things like that that I really want to check out. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.